Okay, everyone. As I mentioned, I've got the chat open on a another screen right here. So feel free to, you know, interrupt me, ask questions as we go. I like to make these interactive. One um kind of rule that I always have when I do these is that before we get into, you know, talking about how awesome trade ideas is and all the cool stuff you can do with it and, and all of that, I want to make sure that I educate as much as possible for those who, you know, maybe not interested in even getting involved with trade ideas that you have a nice takeaway uh, just for for coming here. So we're going to talk about uh, market cycles and and you know the whole idea here has a lot to do with psychology and I think this is a a perfect tie in with that because uh, I am a market technician I'm not a psychologist so you don't want to uh, hear me rap about that but. What I think this market stage analysis, which I'm going to apply on kind of the swing trading time frame, but can be applied on investing to day trading to scalping to any time frame, uh, understanding the cycle that you're in and what's going on with the individual market, I think helps your psychology dramatically. Uh, and the reason for that is that I think a lot of the frustration that occurs with trading occurs because people are trying to fit a strategy into a cycle in which they're not at the time you know uh, you know it it causes the boom and bust or the profit and then loss that a lot of people have where you know maybe they'll have a couple months or a couple weeks or if you're a day trader maybe a couple days where you're absolutely on fire and your strategy is just killing it and then you kind of give all that back in the next few days. So if you have that cycle where there's some periods of time where you're doing great and then some periods of time where you're doing poorly, I really think studying this idea of stage analysis can definitely help that out because it may not be your strategy at all. It may just be applying the wrong strategy at the wrong time, right? So, so first of all, who am I? Uh, who are you hearing talk to you here? So my name is Michael Noss. Again, I'm a chartered market technician. And an alt chartered alternative investment analyst, which is something I used when I worked at the hedge fund space, but not so much anymore. Anymore. Um, I started trading in 2006. This is why I know that everything that can be applied to swing trading, which is what I do now, uh, can also be applied to day trading because I actually started trading for a, a prop firm. So back in those days, before there was HFT trading, before there was you know, computerized, all of these algorithms going on, uh, the prop firms were the HFTs, right? We were kind of the only ones with direct market access. This was even before brokers had direct market access. So we were faster than everyone else and we could we could play these games. Um, and I remember placing hundreds of trades every single day just around whole numbers, large bids and asks, uh, little games that you could play around market makers and specialists and things like that that you can't anymore simply because everything got computerized. So spent a lot of years there uh, as a day trader, as a professional day trader. When that got game kind of changed as things got more and more uh, electrified or or tech, te technologically advanced, we could say, I ended up moving to the hedge fund space. And what I did a lot in these uh, hedge fund spaces is this was around the Bernie Madoff time, right, where no one trusted anybody. And what I would do is kind of go into these hedge funds and and look at what these guys are doing and then go to investors and saying, yes, I think this fund is legitimate and, and this is what they do and this is where the risks are or or no, you know, I, you know, this is something I might you might want to watch out for, um, you know, a lot of accounting and legal work. But what it, it gave me was the ability to take a look at many different hedge funds and how they worked and what they did for money and which ones were successful over time, and which ones were flashes in the pan, and, and all of this, seeing a lot of these hedge funds work. So 10 years doing that until that company got purchased by Mitsubishi Bank, which is now doing a lot of that that work. Um, and then I started working for Trade Ideas here. So I, I started consulting with Trade Ideas to help them build some of the AI technology that we'll take a look at, some uh, trading algorithms. I'm a uh, an algorithm based trader, which essentially just means that I have some idea of what it is I'm going to trade every given day based off some uh, back testing and and systems that I personally run. Um, 
and it just helps me narrow down my field and narrow down my focus. And part of what all of these algorithms look for is what stage that current stock is before it takes trades on them. So I think this will be part, again, whether you're a day trader or a swing trader investor or whether you're an algorithm guy like me or you're just a, a chart guy or even if you're a fundamental analyst, I think this is something that is kind of universal that I like to go back to. The The lady before me talked about going back to basics. This is very much a, um, a, a basics thing in my brain where a lot of traders know this intuitively um, and not a lot of traders talk of it because it is a, a basics thing, but there are ways that we can kind of look at at quantifying stage analysis. So simply put, excuse me one second. Sorry, I have a pretty bad cough. I'll make sure I mute myself for, but um, simply put, the market can be classified into four stages. Uh, this picture isn't is in great quality, but that doesn't matter. We'll get into more live charts and we'll go through some markets and I'll tell you what I think of of certain things and how trade ideas can scan this for you. But the idea is that most people take a look at the market and they just say, okay, I want to buy both flags, for example. Or if you're a fundamental person, you say, oh, I want to buy companies that uh, are trading from a price earnings perspective cheaply or something like that. The easiest way to make sure if something is a, a stock that makes sense to trade is to simply bucket the market into different stages. You know, we would like to think that markets, you know, are always trending one way or the other or uh, move up or down in a straight line, but they certainly don't. So this picture that we have can be fractal as well, right? We have four stages we're going to go over. Uh, and by the end of this, you should be able to look at any stock or or Forex or futures or whatever it is and look at it and say, okay, I think this is in X stage, which means if I want to trade it, I should uh, employ X strategy. That's the idea behind it. Because if anyone tells you they have a strategy that works all the time, uh, you want to run because that that's just not how markets, markets work, right? They have periods of time in which they'll do great and periods of time in which they'll do poorly. Uh, and it's our job to make sure that we're putting the right one at the in the right time in the right location. So stage one is accumulation. I'm going to talk about these from uh, terms of a fundamental analysis and, and technical analysis and what type of investor may be interested in trading what stages because part of the thing that we do at Trade Ideas is I'll show you how we can scan and tell you which stock is in which of these phases. Uh, and so you can scan through and you can find names that fit this and then apply whatever criteria you are. But there will be certain traders that are drawn to certain stages. So you don't need to trade all of these, right? I would actually suggest that you pick one or two and you develop a style around it. And then you just constantly move to which stock or which market is going to be um, you know, fitted there the best uh, when it comes to finding that stage. At least that's what I do. Uh, I'll show you which stages personally I'm uh, the biggest fan of when I look at these things. So accumulation, we have right here in the stage one category. Again, this graphic is by a, a good friend of myself and trade ideas, Brian Shannon from uh, Alpha Trends. Uh, certainly check him out. I want to give him credit because we use this a couple times in the presentation. And the idea behind a stage one accumulation is simply this is where value investors, generally speaking, or hedge funds and large institutions, if they're looking to buy a name, they are going to look to buy the name in some sort of stage one trend. That's what creates the stage one trend. So characteristics of a stage one is that, again, you have this base. And this base is generally occurring at a fairly low price uh, relative to where the stock has been. It could be, you know, a pullback from highs and then an accumulation. It could be around all-time lows and then an accumulation. But for whatever reason, the price has reached a level in which people who are looking at something fundamentally are saying, this now is a price in which I am interested uh, getting involved, right, this area. So for this example, this is just MindMed. Um, I just pulled this one from the scanner. And... You know, you can see around say five bucks up here to you know I think this is three dollars or two fifty or so. 
it just stopped going down. Now, if you go back on the chart, this one's been a downtrend for a very long time. And it spent from September 2022 until March 2024. So a long period of time it spent in that range. Now, that is, again, in my opinion, generally caused because there is some in, some institution that is said, hey, that's to me, that's a good value, right? It wasn't a good value at 20. It wasn't a good value at 15. It wasn't a good value at 10. But, you know, around this $5, give or take area. That's where I think it's a good value. So as it dips, I'm going to be buying in. And these large institutions, right, they will do this because they need dips to buy into. It's one benefit we have as retail traders that institutions do not have is the ability to say, um, I'm able to take trades when the market is moving with me in kind of a momentum style. It's a lot harder for institutions to do that because they need that liquidity. So Stage one, again, think your value investors, think your Warren Buffetts, that type of thing. Now, if you're a value investor as well, I would say this is the stage that you're looking to buy into. Now, notice that there, there is no downtrend here. It's just kind of a sideways trend. Also, if you're somebody who is a bit of a range trader or likes to trade ranges, so say you're someone who uses uh, RSI and you like to buy when the RSI is oversold and then sell when the RSI is overbought, this type of sideways action and sideways stage is a good place for you to participate as well. Great, because you could see that as it sold to the lower end of this range, there were some good buys. And as it got to the higher end of the range, there were there were some good sells. Eventually it broke out. But if you're a range trader, you're just trying to profit as it as it ping pongs around this range. Now, a couple of ways to identify this. And again, within trade ideas, we're going to show you how uh I just built a scanner and anyone with trade ideas can just take my scanner. And if you don't have trade ideas, I'll have a little offer for you guys at the end. But one way to do it is just moving averages, right? Moving averages, just smooth out price. I'm not one that I feel like there's any sort of power to any individual moving average. So I just slapped on a 50 and a 200 period here. And you can see when the 50 started to move sideways. And then even when the 200 started to move sideways and they're crossing above and below each other, it's a good way to visualize that, hey, at least from this point on, you could identify this is a stage one. Now, you know, we're talking about psychology. So how does this help someone from a psychological point of view when you're trading? Well, if you're a momentum trader, if you're a, a trend trader and you're someone who is trying to buy into momentum and you're trying to uh, buy highs and, and have that thing go higher, simply understanding these stages can tell you what not to do. You could say, hey, if I see something and the moving averages are flat and it looks like it's in this stage one, I'm just not going to trade it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of things to trade. And, and one of the things we do is as scanning software, as we show you stuff to trade, you can just say this isn't it. Now, also imagine this is instead of a daily chart, this is a five minute chart. How many times have you day traders looked back at a chart and said, man, I got really chopped up today. I was, you know, I was buying breakouts. I was buying breakdowns. I was, I was trading this and it turns out the market just didn't move today. Well, apply some shorter term moving averages to that and say, Hey, were they just trading flat and chopping up and down above each other? If so, that could have been my signal to sit out or implement another strategy of maybe buying when it breaks new lows or selling when it breaks new highs. Another way to look at this is volume. Generally speaking, in stage one, you'll have low volume. You have a big volume on the downtrend because there's a lot of passion behind this as stops are being hit, people are shorting, people are exiting positions. Uh, you have this kind of momentum that's, that's very interesting to this. Then you have low volume during the stage one, and this is where because again, nothing's really happening. Uh, every time it dips, you have somebody who's looking to kind of get involved when it dips, but as it floats higher, they just aren't going to take trades because they're just waiting. They think they have a place where their, their price makes sense and they're waiting for that price to occur. So you have high volume again on the breakout when we get into stage two, which we'll talk about. The other idea is just different indicators. For example, this is a MACD. You can see 
choppy mess right in right around the zero line just not doing anything and again identifies this stage one very very early so just think about it. there's many different ways to quantify it and when you're building your trading plan this may be something that you use where you can say all right i want to see the macd uh far away from the zero line one way or the other and that's where i'm going to act in the trades you could just be a price action trader and you say i'm just going to mark some highs and lows and if we're inside that range i'm going to stay out or again, with moving averages, we saw if they're flat, they're crossing above each other. It's not interesting either. Stage two, advance. Now, if you are a value investor, you've kind of missed the boat here because this thing is, this is where things are kind of rocketing. Think of NVIDIA or Ozempic or any of those names that are going on right now. Um, you can see, for example, ELF has had this stage one. This is something I talk about all the time because this thing has just been an absolute monster for a beauty supply company, right? They're not curing cancer or creating AIs or anything like that. They just sell makeup, but holy smokes, uh, what a trade. And then it gets into stage two. Now, stage two, we want to think about this again from the different investors. Now, this is where things may start to get quote unquote expensive if you're a value investor. You may say, hey, this is this is getting wild. This this company's up, you know, multi hundred percent gains, maybe thousand percent gains in, in a year or two. Uh, a value investor is not going to be interested in this stock because there's just no value to be had here because it's running. But if you're a a trend trader or a momentum trader, these are the kind of stocks you want to look for where, hey, every time it breaks out a new high, it runs for a bit and then it breaks a new high and it runs for a bit and so on and so forth. The um, That movement is, is what we need. I say we because myself as a trend trader, we need this movement in order to be to be profitable. And this generally happens after a stage one. So what's happened is that this range, all the accumulation has occurred, and this is for the people who are value investors or quote unquote in the know. They they know this company is looking very interesting. They're doing something interesting. And then as it breaks out, this is when the rest of the world realizes, oh, yeah, this this company was incredibly overvalued and they are doing something um, pretty, pretty fascinating here. Now, if we go back to the moving averages, you can start to see that they they change. Of course, you're you're never, I say never, but you know, every now and then you may be able to get the exact moment that it switches stages. But the idea here is to identify which stage we're in. So we have a 50 day moving average sloping up. We have a 200 day moving average sloping up. And we got the 50 day above the 200 day. Again, just a good signal. As long as this is occurring where this, this 50, 200 day moving average is sloping up, uh, price is trading above the 50 day, right? Maybe you take a little break right here and then you're right back into it when you trade here. Just a simple way to use moving average to say, this stock is in a stage two uptrend. I want to be looking to try to get involved in this name on either pullbacks or breakouts if I'm a trend trader. Now, if I'm someone who is, again, just to use the example of the person using the RSI, and I am selling the stock or shorting the stock every time it gets overbought, I'm going to get killed. Okay? Now, if I'm buying the stock when it gets oversold, maybe that works. Um, or maybe I never get over, it never gets oversold because it's incredibly, incredibly strong. So by simply either saying, if I'm a range trader, someone who's buying tops and selling bottoms, or if I'm a value investor, I'm just not going to participate in stocks in stage two. Maybe I still own some because I bought it in stage one, and I'm just going to trail on that position, but it's not just not something I'm going to trade in stage two. Again, for me as a trend trader, this is where I want to get involved. All of my focus comes into finding stocks in stage two that are making some sort of uh, tradable range or pullback or something like that. And again, we'll show some live examples when I get over to trade ideas here. Also, you can see the increased volume, right? So as I mentioned, low volume when it was in here at stage one, higher volume and big volume spikes when we get into stage two, meaning that this is the time where it starts to get reported in the news and, and talked about everywhere. You get these big spikes over and over again uh, that you don't get when the stock is just kind of chilling about. Stage three, distribution. So this is essentially the opposite of stage one. This is where the if we go back to the value investor, the value investor is saying, okay, this is getting ridiculous. 
Uh, of course, I grabbed Peloton, which is a iPad striped to, strap, strapped to a bicycle that I think was like a bigger company than Exxon Mobil for a second up here. When it was $150 a share, when I took the screenshot, it's at four. I wouldn't be surprised if it's even lower. Uh, you can see this kind of, if you trace out this big area or even the small area, either or, you get this back and forth action. You get a lot of wicks in this area. Every time it rallies and it gets close to that, it sells back off, right? This is distribution. There's now a point where I talk about how the large hedge funds and institutions they can't buy as things are running they have to get in before they run same thing um, on the other side right institutions don't want to be selling as this thing is is selling off because then they're chasing price lower and, and because they're so big they're causing price to get lower so they're trying to look for an area up here where they think retail participation is starting to come in and they can sell against that retail participation to take the money that they had from the stage one that they bought in. Another thing is these moving averages. Now I will say stage three generally lasts way shorter than stage two. They say that um, you know the market when it tops, it's the elevator down. It's the people, if you don't get where you want to sell out at, then you're chasing on the way down. So I've noticed quite often stage three is shorter than stage one. You have more time to consider buying. Uh, selling, you have to do much quicker. But you can see, again, the moving averages go from pointing up to now they're kind of sloped sideways and they're crossing back and forth across each other. This whole area up here, I would represent as stage three. And then you can kind of see what happens next. Oh, also volume in stage three also dies down, right? So volume goes where trend goes and then dies down when things um, when things chill out. Then we have stage four decline. We can use Peloton here. Uh, you don't really need to use the moving averages to say, hey, when this thing broke and fell out of favor, uh, there was nothing that you could do to really make money off this thing uh, other than shorting. I mean, some well-timed bounces, maybe, if you're, uh, if you're really, really good at that, maybe. Uh, but again, just not doing well uh, overall when it comes to any sort of trend. So if you're a trend trader and you're okay with shorting stocks, this is a great stage for you as a stage four. If you are somebody who is a interested in Peloton and you think that this is going to be a good company and they're going to do something in the future that's going to make them investable again, this isn't the place that you want to participate because the, the sellers are in control and they just continue to push it down and down and down. You would want to wait for some sort of stage one or preferably right buying into as we're transitioning into stage two. Stage four, you're just kind of kicking out. So you can see how your psychology becomes much easier if you just break the market down into these baskets and say, I am XYZ trader. I am going to trade this stage and this stage, right? So if I'm a um, support and resistance trader, I'm going to trade stage one and stage four. If I'm a trend trader, I'm going to stay or stage one is stage three. If I'm a trend trader, I'll do two and four. And if I identify that whatever I'm trading, whether it's intraday, these are one minute candles instead of um, daily candles. If I'm a investor and these are monthly candles instead of uh, weekly candles, these are here, then I, I'm just going to you know, sidestep them if they're not in the stage that I'm interested in. Moving averages, again, you know, pointing down short-term moving averages below long-term moving averages, just signaling, again, just a utter collapse of capital. And then large volume, you can see when we were in this area, the volume really dipped. But as we started to break out, the volume started to increase on every dip, just saying, hey, uh, there's people that are ready and willing to sell this thing whenever they can, so... Now, how are we going to use trade ideas to make sure that we are uh, able to do this and we're benefiting from this, this stage analysis? Well, step one, so we get we need to know our style. And I'm going to go through, we have scanners for each uh, on a daily chart representing which of these stocks are in which stages. I'm going to go through different indicators and tools you can use to trade based off the stages. Uh, we're going to filter them out, and then we're going to avoid all other stages. So again, if I'm not um, someone who likes to trade trends, I'm not going to get involved with a trending stock, right? I'm certainly not going to short a trending stock. Uh, I'm not going to get involved at all in a trending stock, or at the very least, I'm going to make sure that I'm just participating in that trend. So, all right. So thank you guys very much for... Um, 
for the presentation part, now we're going to get into trade ideas. We're going to go through some of these stocks. I'm going to show you how we how we built these scans to try to help you if you want to do this yourself. Uh, but we highly recommend you can do this trade ideas. This is also when you can ask me any questions that you have about um, you know this kind of trading or other kind of trading or anything that trade ideas can do. Uh, hell, if you want me to take a look at a chart or something for you, we can do that as well. Now, we have a little, if you go to trade-ideas slash NOS, you can check us out there. Actually, and if you just go to trade-ideas.com, there's all kinds of cool stuff for you there. We have a free version of an account with delayed data that you can kind of poke around um, and, and play with as well. Uh, I'm going to be showing you the downloaded version in which I have this, this chart right here. So simple version and i'm going to go through all of trade ideas when i'm done this but i did want to show this particular layout and how we were able to separate these different um these different stages right so one of the ways that we show data here at trade ideas is with these tree maps that show us right this is the stuff that's doing well this is the stuff that's doing poorly you can see these are moving in real time uh, as stocks are moving around so that i can keep an eye on these different stages and which one's doing well. And I'll show you all the filters you can apply and, and craziness you can do like that. So let's start with stage one. And we're, we're looking for stocks that are uh, in these kind of ranges or basing in these ranges. You can see hanging out inside of range, these moving averages are, are kind of sloping sideways on this INGN, whatever this is. Um, also at the top here, you can see all kinds of fundamental data. There's way more fundamental data we can look at. Now, let me actually, I'll bring this up too to show you that. But uh, right on the chart itself, got to get that back there. Right on the chart itself, you can already learn some things, right? 500,000 shares done today. Uh, this is the float, 8% short float. They have $119 million in cash and, and $22 million in debt. Um it, all kinds of of interesting, right? The revenue, they're losing money per share, uh, but their revenue is okay. You can do revenue growth, all that fundamental stuff. So I just say that for, for this section is because if you are a value investor, if you're someone who cares about this fundamental type data, then you want to take a look at this and say, hey, you know, this one's in a stage one. It's, it's chopping around down here. The moving averages are all flat and crossing above and below each other. But let me take a look at the fundamental. Let me see what's going on in the, in the company. We have more fundamental data. You can do, uh, again, revenue growth, um, you know, earnings growth dividends, all that kind of stuff. You can also take a look at the news. So here's some news. If I click on this one, this is Yahoo Finance Canada. You see it just opens up a website and, and gives you the article that referenced the stock right there. Uh, so we scan kind of the entire open internet for that to make sure that you're getting all of the different news sources so you don't have to just subscribe to one uh, and do that. And then also you can just read about the company and what it does. So this INGN, I never heard of this one before. It's a medical technology company which manufactures portable oxygen concentrators. So cool. Sorry, again, I got that cough. So I'm just taking the drinks when I got them. Also, you can take a look at the competitors right here. So these are competitors based off what uh, industry group and sector they're in. So if maybe you liked the look of this company and you wanted to see how some of the other ones are doing, you can you can do that as well. This one has earnings uh, post-market on yesterday. So that's probably why we have this little gap here. You can see in the 30-minute chart. And you can go through and just start scanning through all of these companies that are going to be, uh, these ones might be up, they might be down based off whatever the day you're looking at and say, hey, am I interested in getting involved in these stage one type companies? Now, if you wanted to apply filters to this, again, you can do this. This is just a layout that I built. It didn't take me very long to build out. Again, I'll show you all the cool stuff that trade ideas can do. But say, for example, I wanted to take this entire list, but I only wanted stocks that are, uh, I don't know, let's say cash to debt. So we have a cash to debt ratio. So I always want to make sure they have more cash than debt. I can just go in and say I want uh, more cash than debt, and then I hit go. And you'll notice this list kind of changes here as well, right? That INGN is still there, 
because they have way more cash than debt. You see that uh, Lufax, L-U, has more cash than debt. So this is in the list as well. You can do all of this filtering based off whatever it is that you decide is important for trading. I set up these initial scans just to show that individual trend. Again, you can see these ones as I'm kind of clicking through them here. They are in these, these tight stage ones. A lot of these you can see are actually these marijuana stocks that uh, looked at least for a moment that they were going to break out and start moving maybe into a stage two. Uh, a lot of those got reversed pretty quickly in that area. Now, my favorite one is going to be the stage two trades. Now, again, you can take a look at these and you know that everything in this list is going to have some sort of upward sloping moving averages. So you know that, hey, this is something that is strong. I could do the same filters to this if I want to make sure that fundamental filters make sense. Um, I can go in and do that. But let's say, for example, uh, for these ones here, because they're in stage two, I want to you know, take these and I want to filter these by instead of a fundamental filter, I want to apply a technical filter. Now I'm scrolling down here just to show you these are all of the different filters you can do to apply to scans that we already have or that um, are ones that are scans that you built yourself, right? These are just ones that I built myself. I'm going to say I want stocks that are breaking out of their daily Boilinger band. So there's there's some momentum going on there as well. I'm going to go and I'm going to say, I want this above the top of its daily Boilinger band. And for those who don't know, Boilinger band is just a standard deviation around price. So anything that's above here right now is going to have some type of a uh, little bit momentum to it, right? It's going to be, um, it's going to be, moving in a way that it's breaking above these ones sym this is a, a interesting one that i've been watching for a while so this one's breaking out a bit so now just with a quick addition to the filter i found sym that's in a nice stage two uptrend here but also it looks like it's breaking out so now we have kind of two things in our favor to say hey let's take a look it's also breaking this downtrend line that positive earnings yesterday uh, you know, I talked about all the fundamental data we have up here. This one has a 25% short float. It's a pretty wild short float as well. Uh, so this might be something that's interesting to me because, again, I am someone who I specifically focus on stocks that are in uptrends. Um, now, let's go back to the kind of the stage one people, the people who aren't in uptrends, and let's remove that fundamental filter. But let's look for, let's say, RSI. And we want the daily RSI to be less than... Uh, 30 and we'll take out the cash to debt thing we put in there because now I'm saying that I want to trade a little bit differently so if I'm in a stage a two I want to take a look at oh there's nothing in there interesting I'll we'll have to loosen that up a little bit. But if I'm trading in stage two, I'm okay with buying breakouts. I'm okay with buying continuations. I'm okay with buying pullbacks into uptrends at, at levels that I decide because those are you know very interesting levels knowing that this thing is in an underlying trend. If I'm trading in a stage one uptrend, I might want to buy things that are, are oversold. So let's make this daily RSI you know, at least 50. Let's do that. And let's see. Okay, we got a couple in here now. Because as we talked about, we want to apply different strategies for different, add in an RSI here, uh, different strategies for different markets. So if I'm someone who's, I'm trading this these stage ones in which I'm looking to kind of play these ranges. I may look at something like an RSI. So you can see how much I limited things down just based off what's going on in the market. So, right, this this one would have would have been great a couple of days ago when the RSI was way down here, knowing that this is just in a range and I'm just playing this range and uh, knowing that, hey, this is in a, a potential stage one uh, accumulation right here. So, these ring guys, I didn't know they were doing so bad. I have a whole bunch of their products all over the house. I think I pay them pretty handsomely monthly. Um, again, so you can see how 
If I'm trading stage two, I can customize a strategy for that. If I'm trading stage one, I can customize a strategy for that. And then using trade ideas, I could just use a simple layout like this. And I'm only presented those things that are of interest to me uh, in those individual stages. And now, maybe I'm not even interested in stage three or four. I could just, let's say, exit out of those. And then, right, see how quickly I can just kind of customize this around. Well, so now I have a stage one scanner and I know how I'm going to trade that looking for oversold RSIs and I have a stage two scanner. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for these momentum breakouts. And there we go, right? We're, we now have two swing trading styles, which again, could be adapted to day trading or, or investing um, that we built just using that stage analysis. Now, on top of that, we could just take a look at the at the overall market and say, hey, what stage are we in? Well, until proven otherwise, we have upward sloping moving averages and we're in a nice trend. So the market's in a stage two. So maybe I want to focus on stocks in stage two. So again, I hope the, the presentation part of this too had just helped you say, hey, maybe this is something I can utilize in my scan to at least stay out of things that aren't working overly well. Now, what else can we do? right? Because that's, that's not all we do. That is just one thing. If you've watched me in the other presentations, you know, I'm always bringing something different because trade ideas has a wide breadth of, of things that we do. And I just talked a lot about swing trading. So let's actually take a look of a couple things we do from a day trading point of view. So if you open up trade ideas for the first time, you're presented with this, which is our channel bar. The idea here is that we have all these channels that we rotate all the time based off what's happening in the market. Um, and we rebuilt layouts. I showed you all of the different scans that you can do, uh, all of the different filters you can add. You can go crazy under the hood if you want, uh, customizing to your heart's content uh, anything that you want to see. But we try to cover the bases here um, with all of these. So for example, if you're sitting down at pre-market, you might want to click on the pre-market channel, and this is just going to bring up a number of scans that just tell you what is gapping up or down the most in the pre-market. Of course, we are halfway through the trading day right now, so these are, are going to look a little bit a little bit differently. It's still just sorting by which one has gapped the most, uh, and you can just see this information, right? This is stocks that are up the most. Uh, you know, TVIC, for example, had been gapping up 45%. Now it looks like it's given all of that back, which is unfortunate, but a good way just to sit down and say, hey, I just want, you know, show me everything that's gapping. I can take a look. You see that the news is right here uh, at the bottom right, as well as all that fundamental data that I talked about, and then access to the chart. And again, just great way if you're if you're someone who's a day trader and you want to look through the gappers and see what's going on, uh, you can definitely do that. Now, say the market is open and you're someone who trades opening range breaks. There's a very interesting study that was released recently on the validity of opening range breaks. And um, that's what I was looking at. So you can see down here, everything that comes through here will come through in real time as its opening range is being broken. So uh, just as we loaded this up, iRobot came in because it's breaking its 60 minute opening range break. You can see right here that that little wick right here would be the high of that opening range. And you can see kind of just as we sat down, uh, it broke there as well. 30% short float on this one is kind of interesting. Now, on top of the tree map that I showed you guys before that shows, uh, you can see here as well, it's showing this is the one that's up. These are up the most from that initial opening range. You can take a look, right? These are going to be outside of their five-minute opening range and moving a lot. This DZ... SI is moving, this MIDP, whatever this is, is moving as well. We also have this scan type right here. Let me actually focus in on this for a little bit. Uh, this particular scan type right here is what we call a stock race. And the idea behind here is that we always want to be looking at, especially if we are day trading, whatever is the strongest particular names. Um, in that very moment. Don't show me something that was strong off the open. I showed you a couple examples just clicking through the gappers of things that gapped and then just completely fell apart. Those aren't interesting to me at all, right? What I'm looking for is what's moving right now at this moment. So what this scan is doing is taking stocks in this particular instance that are up from their opening range and saying which ones are moving the most. So this BTA, which is a municipal fund, is moving. We have Bumble, 
popping up here as well. You can see a lot of what's going on here. This MULN has been exciting, but you can see how this is constantly sorting and resorting. And we can actually, if we go to the explosive winners, we're going to get a little bit of a better view on this one, I believe. And this one, for example, this explosive winners is just showing us stuff that's rocketing right now. If you're a momentum trader, this is this is definitely the place for you. Stocks that are making new highs, you can see this is just lighting up with uh, stocks that are making new 52-week highs, 50 um, trading up on the day. This ASC is just an absolute monster. And I'm just kind of waiting for this thing to occur. Trip, pretty good momentum, not to the upside this time, to the downside. Uh, catching up to that 10-day moving average. Now, as this thing starts going, this race up here, it's showing us, again, this what is happening in real time as things are happening. I guarantee you, a lot of traders out there, especially day traders, get in a lot of trouble by trading things that aren't moving right now. Uh, if we are day trading, specifically, the finding where that momentum is is of the utmost importance to us because that's going to be the difference of what's um, what's doing very well and what's doing very poorly um, and and our overall p l because we can't make money on things that aren't moving so by going through this list you're seeing things that are moving right now so you can either take action on these uh, as you see them if that's something you want to do or you can just say hey i'm going to set a price alert so this dz uh, SI, a crazy move up 36%. This thing's just running. Say I want to buy a pullback, I can just right click and I can create a price alert. And you see, it'll just add a little line right here. So now the system will yell at me if we get back to that price if I want to buy. So right, we're able to take something very simple like, hey, what's moving the most and build trading plans on the fly. On top of all this, if you want to then trade these things, I can open this up as well. We have both a simulator and we have the ability to plug our system directly into uh, Interactive Brokers or E-Trade, which are two of, for our traders, the most common brokers out there. So we have picked those to build to. So let's just connect it to the sim right now. And then if I want to take trades, I can actually just click on the chart. I can place it trade wherever I'd like, a trigger, a stop loss, all of that will be put out immediately uh, on in the system. I can, you know, paper trade to watch. I can do all those things as well. Um, from here, just the last thing I'll, I'll show you in the system before we'll take a quick look at our web version for you Mac people and iPhone people and, and, and people that are out there as well, is the ability to back test. Let's just go and grab a, a short squeeze section right here. Oh, no, let me grab a. So if you are a quantitative person like me and you're looking for some sort of help from a, a backtested strategy and let's just see, do I have anything that may backtest? Okay. I don't know. This may backtest well or not. I don't know. But I have a strategy like this and this strategy is simple. I'm looking for stocks that are breaking out of resistance areas on the daily chart. This is just something that I've built, but then also have a pretty decent short float. So they're crossing above some sort of daily resistance zone. You must be looking at this resistance zone right here. And they have a short float, I believe above 5%. The idea is that I'm looking for a breakout or some sort of continuation here. Say, I think that's a good idea. And I have done all the work to test that. But now I actually want to have a system test it for me. I can go in, I can back test this strategy. Say, hey, what if we take entries any time of day and we are going to exit uh, five days from now? And let's just remove risk management for now. We're going to go, I'm going to say, what would happen if I bought anything that occurred in here as it happened? And I want to hold that for 64 days, or I sorry, I want to hold that for five days and then I want to sell it. No risk management. You can obviously add some, um, but I just want to take these trades and see what happened. I can click buy, and this will take a second, but it's going to simulate uh, sometimes thousands and thousands of different trades. So far, this doesn't look like it's going to be an overall amazing strategy, which is one of the unsung benefits of backtesting is, is sometimes uh, you think you have something, 
um, that you don't actually have, right? Sometimes you think that, hey, this strategy, I either heard about it on YouTube or a course or from someone. Uh, the thing I love about backtesting is I can prove it. If someone comes to you and says, hey, uh, buy a stock when it hits the 200-day moving average, you can say, okay, let me go into a system like Trade Ideas and let me see what would happen if I bought stocks as they hit the 200-day moving average. And you don't have to guess whether or not that's a good idea. It will simply spit out an answer and say you would have made or you would have lost whatever amount of money. So as this thing is going, it's done over you know 400 trades so far. Uh, win rate is only 35% and our profit factor is negative. So it doesn't look like this is going to be the the earth shaking idea that you know we would have maybe hoped. Um, you know, it's equity curves dipping down a bit, so it might not end up being a a great strategy. Again, not always a bad thing. Sometimes we think it's going to be a good strategy, and then all of a sudden we we do the test and we go, no, that's not uh, that's not very good at all, or quite the opposite. Right, and I'll show you some other ways that backtesting can teach you about trading uh, once this completes. So. 32% win rate across 376 trades, not great. Now, your average winner is amazing compared to your average loser. So if you can use some discretion to make sure you're taking the ones uh, that actually win, it does look like there's some good uh, some good advantage there. But overall, you don't, you don't win very much at all. And that creates a somewhat flat to negative equity curve. But it doesn't mean it's useless. We can learn from this. So if we go into the optimization tab, we can take a look at things like, okay, what about the time of day? Well, if I enter these things pretty much any time except right at the close, they don't work very well. So if I removed all of these, but I'm just going to enter these on the close. Remember, this is a swing trading strategy. You can do the same thing for day trading strategies. If I enter this on the close, well, you know that's a, a good little return that you actually make here. You have a, a two profit factor as opposed to these that are under zero. But all of those filters that I showed you earlier, you can go through and you can use these filters versus the strategy itself. So let's go into that 200-day uh, moving average. And let's go a change from the 200-day. Well, there it is. Change from the 200-day moving average. And I can click on this, and this can tell me a few things. right? If it is, If this strategy is below the 200-day moving average, the strategy is awful, right? It makes negative money. If the stock is well above the 200-day moving average, it actually starts to, to make a lot of money. So I can actually just take that and I can put that into my strategy. Let's just put that in right there. Like that. And now I can re-back test the strategy with that little change that the computer made for me. It said, hey, just ignore any of these stocks that are below the 200-day moving average, and then let's see what happens. Now, this may dramatically reduce the number of trades that occurs uh, to the point that we could get into some curve fitting or something like that. But what it will do is say, okay, we've removed a bunch of trades. Now it's just testing all of these same ones, but they have to be above the 200-day moving average. And then we can see what occurs when it comes to the trading as well. So uh, a great way to help refine your trading if you're someone who is uh, struggling a little bit and you really don't know how to uh, help refine your trading because there's only so much time in the day you know, to practice. We find that the traders, we've done a little test in our system and Traders who use the back tester and start to tweak and learn their strategies in the back tester actually seem to perform better in overall trading. So that's a little bit of a chat about stage analysis, and that is a little bit of a chat about the um, you know overall trade ideas and what we can do for you. So I haven't seen any questions come through yet. Let me look to make sure I haven't missed any. But please ask ask questions about uh, about anything. I know I've taken over a little early, so I may have to end it a little early if there's not questions, but uh, I appreciate everyone for coming by. Again, come check out trade-ideas.com um, if you want to learn more about the system, or you can, again, find me anywhere, uh, Michael Noss CMT. You can hit me up on any of the social medias if you have any more questions that you, for whatever reason, don't want to ask here.
Thank you very much. All right, David, I don't think there are any questions. Um, so I believe that's going to be the end of my presentation for today. Oh, here we go. One, one I'll talk, but I completely forgot. Sorry, if I do have a little bit of time, David, completely forgot about our AI. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you have another uh, almost 20 minutes, so. Yeah. I, yeah, I talked uh, all about what trade ideas can do, and I forgot about one of the headlining features, which is our artificial intelligence, which uh, essentially how this works is it uses that back tester that I just showed you guys, and it ends up, um, we as traders feed it strategies that we have uh, back tested and refined. So, uh, for example, I talk about the opening range break and how that's a great strategy. I've talked about, um, you know, uh, gap fills. Uh, I've talked about different um, indicators and stage analysis and, and all of that when I've done different and this current uh, webinar here as well. The What we do is we feed that into this machine learning engine and it crunches millions of scenarios every single day. So it goes and says, okay, just like I said there with the, you know, let's back test the strategy and then let's back test it again when it's above its 200 period moving average and see if, if it performs better. Well, doing that on a strategy personally, doing it, you know, over time, that's really, really time consuming and really, really hard. So what we did is we built a system that does that, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times uh, every single night. It takes these strategies that us as traders have built in it and it says, okay, I want to try, you know, what if I take this strategy that Michael's built and let me try it above the 200 day moving average and see if that makes sense. Let me try it in this scenario, see if it makes sense, so on and so forth, just trying it again and again and again. Um, and if it can't find a combination in which it works and which that makes sense, then it just won't place that trade or won't show the, our people that strategy. Because what we have found is that there are, like I talked about with the stage analysis, sometimes some strategies work amazingly and then other times those strategies do not. And again, if anyone tells you, hey, I've got the strategy that works in all markets, no, they, they don't. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to have something that adapts to and based off of whatever's happening in the overall market. Now, like anything, there are, there are days where it does fantastically and there are days where it doesn't. And that's just the way it works. So today we're down a little bit so far today. Yesterday was an amazing day for it. That's just the nature of it. But the idea is that um, if you are a newer trader and you... You want something that says, hey, I just, I want a system that will show me something with some statistical significance, right? So it's going to spit out trades. And I know that there is uh, a higher probability that something like KD, which it recommended right here, 24, there's a higher probability that this thing closes higher than lower because it's testing based off the entry criteria and then where it closes that. And then, of course, we suggest you apply your trading eye to it. And you don't just say, hey, a system told me to do this, so I'm just going to you know, mindlessly do it. Uh, again, we, we've we talked to a lot of our traders. We have not met a single profitable one that just goes, hey, I just place trades because you know, a system told me to. Um, so what we're hoping is that you take a look at this and you say, yeah, well, you know, KD looks interesting and, and maybe I got on this breakout, maybe not. But you can see it's catching up to its 10-day moving average right here or 10-period moving average. You know, maybe I'll take a look at this if it if it breaks a new high and then, you know, maybe a stop goes under this low right here. And they're building trading plans based off of this, again, knowing statistically that at least they're trading with something on its side. And it, the advantage is that we have stop management on it. We have stop losses. We know, uh, you know, when things work and when things don't. Um, I think what's happening with the with it today, if I take a look at the market, yeah, we're in an incredibly choppy day right here. QQQ as well. Yeah, it's an incredibly choppy day. So some of these trends may take a little longer um, to resolve. Now, the question is, is why does it not work well with volatile stocks? It works great, actually, with volatile stocks. We've done a lot of testing, and it performs the best when stocks are the most volatile, which is one of those that I, I talked about earlier, where um, we are the... Um, 
we're one of these where it, it everything in here, I guess I can click on just any name randomly, will have high relative volume. So we've done a lot of testing and we have found that high relative volume. So like the 64 number right here means this INOD is doing 65 times normal volume. So just incredible volume for this name. And you can see the AI recommended it actually early in the morning at this uh, 950 area. I don't know if I would chase it after this giant move right here, but it comes back in, breaks back through. Maybe this is the place to actually take the trade. Let's take a simulated trade right there. Uh, we'll take that and we'll see what happens on this INDO. So the idea is that we are showing traders where things work really well and they work really well on uh, volatile uh, high stocks. And again, I have, we, we test these things. We record every trade. We, we know, right? There's no, uh, there's no confusion on this. We've been running this thing since 2018. So we have all the data um, and we are constantly refining it as well. So this is the beauty of doing something with trade ideas where all of the traders are the people who run it. We are not just sitting back and kind of watching and, and letting the machine do everything, we're going in and we're tweaking it. So this high relative volume change is something that we've actually made in the last few months where we realized that, hey, if we remove all of the stocks that the AI was recommending that were low relative volume and low um, relative volatility, that it performed way better. It does way better with the high relative volume name. So again, this is not meant to just be blindly followed because you know, we wouldn't, we are traders at trade ideas. We would never recommend anyone blindly follow anything. Um, but if you're someone who just feels like you don't know where to look, you're trying to figure out where to trade, but you don't know where to look. At least if you sit down here, you know, in the long run, um, trade this, um, this is a profitable system um, that, over time spits out high probability results. And you also know that, hey, everything that comes through here, if I click through all of these, they're all going to have very high relative volumes. So Max, for example, this one actually got stopped out, but did 21 times normal volume. Big C, what a ticker there, Big C. Uh, really high relative volume. This one's actually up nice. It took this breakdown at 674, nine times normal volume. All right, we talked about KD that had, or sorry, we talked about INDO that's 65 times normal volume. This one is 10 times normal volume. Um, lots of different uh, symbols throughout the day, but not spamming you, right? So if we just take all these and we just, let's take this and let's actually just combine. We've got this kind of separated out. But let's say we just do long and short strategies. So basically all strategies. Um There. So this is about right. I would say between five and 10 symbols given a day, uh, you can have it read the symbols out and flash in your face when, when it's doing something uh, so that you know, hey, there's there's a trade being taken here that you might want to take a look at. Um, for me, as someone who is primarily a swing trader, but likes to take a day trade or two as a way to uh, stay engaged with the market intraday uh, and maybe, you know, make a few bucks off it, knowing that, again, swing trading is my bread and butter. This is all I use and, and the system that I use. I want to take a look at it. Now, for me, I'll tell you how I trade these things. Um, I, let's, I take, take a pre-market. Let's take a post-market. I very much am a big fan of this 10 day moving average that my buddy Steve who works with trade ideas uses all the time on the 15 minute chart. I look at these names. I know they're going to be high volatile names because we've tested it. And those are the ones that do the best and then high relative volume names because we've tested them and those are the one that moves the best. And that just makes sense intellectually, right? It's uh, if you're trying to trade Amazon every single day, well, there's going to be some days Amazon's going to move incredibly because there's some news event or something that's occurred. There's going to be some days that Amazon doesn't do anything and you want to make sure that you're out of it or ignoring it on those days. So by focusing on these high volatility or and, and high um, relative volume names, it makes sense. So something like INDO, again, I didn't take this one. I was getting ready for this presentation here. It came through with this. I don't think I would have bought it right here. It, it's up a whole lot. It was up like 41% on the, on the day at this point. We have these picture and picture charts. So the chart right here is a daily chart. So I can see both the daily and a 15-minute uh, chart at the same time. I like to see if the stock can either rest or pull back and then find support at this 10-period um, moving average. 
And then for me, what I'll do is I'll just simply buy it if I can see it holding support. So I probably would have bought on this candle right here. Then the idea is that if we get a significant close below this 10 period moving average, I want to get out. And I find that over time, it actually does a really good job of keeping me in these trades. Um, and every now and then, I will get one that trends really, really well. So I don't know what this KD, oh, this KD just, right? So I would look at something like this, and maybe I will when I'm done this presentation right here. If this holds the 10 period moving average, I may buy some right here and then just check on it every 15 minutes. And if we close below the 10, then it's time to get out. Or because these are day trades at the end of the day, right? If we go to the daily chart on this one, um, you can see, right, I'm not going to swing trade this unless we get some sort of significant move because... Uh, we had earnings post-market yesterday. So this is an earnings pop that's happened right here. So those are, again, more, more day trades for me than anything else. So that's the idea here with the AI. The benefit to this is that, again, you have a series of traders looking at this thing and, and giving it instructions and making tweaks as time goes on. And then you also have uh, a machine that's doing a whole bunch of heavy lifting and, um, and, you know, crunching numbers to make sure that, hey, it's trying to get you what's working right now because there's like 50 some odd strategies inside the AI and we generally will only show you a couple at a time. So let's see how many strategies made the cut today. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six out of 50 strategies, only six strategies made the cut. That's because the other ones just aren't testing well right now. You know, if you look at any long-term back test, you'll see periods of growth and periods of choppiness. What we're trying to do is to say, hey, if there's any way we can keep out our clients on that period of choppiness, and that's what we want to take a look at. So, uh, does trade ideas have the capability to cop some copy someone else's trade? No. So, what trade ideas is, is we are a, a scanning and uh, a trading, so you can trade through again, interact brokers or e-trade. Um, and kind of algorithmic system. So we sell kind of the picks and the shovels is the best way to talk about it, in which that uh, if you have a strategy that you're interested in, or if you want to use our back tester to help you build a strategy, when it comes time to trade that strategy, we can help you find that. Now, you know, everything I showed so far is on the downloaded version, but we can actually go here and I can show you some of the stuff on the web version. And this is an account that you can actually sign up for for free and get some delayed data. And then if you're interested, kind of convert. Um, we have these ability, the ability right here to do a lot of the scanning that I showed you before uh, with less customization, but on, on the web, on the app right here. So for example, this right here is showing stocks making new highs or lows for the day. Uh, the market must be moving down right now because we're seeing a lot more new highs versus new lows ticking along here. We have these stocks that are ranking stocks by change in the last 30 minutes. What's moving here right now? I can move this to a 30 minute time frame. And of course, this is web based. So this will work on your iPhone, your iPad, your smart TV, whatever whatever has a web browser uh, that works with HTML, you can actually load this up on. So um, this for me is great because I can use it on my phone when I'm not at my desk to check on positions or see what's going on. And again, a lot of the functionality without the customization, because we've actually noticed that most of our clients don't need the customization. They just want to know, hey, what stocks are moving right now that I can apply my trading plan to? And again, you can see a lot of that going on here. Uh, just showing that, hey, this SGE is moving right now. Using the stock race functionality I showed you before. So now let's go into sector scope. This is a little bit more for boomers like me that like to trade overall sectors. I can take a look here and I know which sectors are moving up or down at the time. Uranium's moving down, solar's moving down, uh, things that are up today, communications, utilities are moving higher. Uh, that's to me generally worrisome that you're seeing utilities move higher. That's a defensive sector and another uh, stock race that's happening down here as well. You can take a look at these momentum, the stock momentum. These are these races we talked about and we can customize these. These are biggest gainers and biggest losers. But say I just wanted to look at S&P 500 names. I can do that just by clicking on those S&P 500 names. I can do all of my research on different stocks here. I want to go to, let's see how MindMed is doing. This was up uh, earlier in the day, 
it's down now, right? I can open this up and, and zoom the chart. I can add some indicators in here. There's all kinds of things that I can do uh, within this one. And then the same data window here. So what the, the details on the stock, all the fundamentals, what does the company do? You know, I can go and I can click on their news. And if I want to click on this news right here, again, it just brings me to, in this case, Benzinga. That has a little article about this guy. Uh, all done on the web, again, for you Mac people, which I am, or... Sorry. A test of the emergency system just came through. Um, yeah, so you can do all of this stuff right here. And again, we can... Oh, I'll paper trade. I'll do the portfolio master challenge a little bit later, but you can also paper trade through here. So soon you will be able to trade fully the same way you can on the downloaded version. So from your phone, you could send trades to interactive brokers and you can do all that. But I'm actually going to put in an order to short, let's say a hundred shares of the spy. If we get to that level, I can just click that and I can go through and do all of that real quick and I'll just put out an order. Again, right now, this goes to our Trade Ideas Paper Trader. Again, eventually, this will go to um, your live account as well so you can place trades based off what you see on the web version. Last but not least, again, I can't believe that we, again, we do so much that when I do these presentations, it's really hard for me to get it all in, but I forgot entirely about our Portfolio Master Challenges. So we do these roughly once a month and the idea is that we understand that new traders and struggling traders and even experienced traders, uh, if they're trying a new strategy, should paper trade. And it's just, you, you should do it. We all know we should do it, but paper trading is boring. And we, we understand that and we agree with it. So we try to make paper trading fun while you're building out new strategies. And we do that by creating these challenges. So... When the next one comes up, which I think is end of this month or, or end of next month, I can't remember. Um, if you enter, you have a chance to win $2,400 in an Amazon gift card that we send based off whoever wins. And you can trade right from the web. Um, for the, that two-week period, you can use the entirety of the Trade Ideas software. Um, so it's basically a way for you to come in, spend 7 bucks, try out the software, see if it's something that you like. Uh, we The reason... We charge the seven dollars is because we get everything is live data through trade ideas. We get directly from the stock exchanges, so we need to make sure that right we're covering that or the thousands of people that we bring in and and we get charged data for. Right? It would end up being a, a pretty big loss. So what we want to do is we want to bring people in, have them try the software, but more importantly, have them paper trade. And you know we have a nice leaderboard here. So this is from the last challenge that we summed up in I believe April. Uh, that's my account down here. You can see I didn't do well in this paper trading challenge. But the idea is you can take some of these strategies, you can play with them, you can try completely and utterly risk-free. And then from there, if it's something that you end up enjoying, um, you can trade from there. So whew, I'm glad I had that extra time because we are we are right at my limit. So again, thank you guys for checking it out. Thank you for asking questions. Go to trade-ideas.com if you want to learn more about the software. Thank you, David, for having me. I always loved coming and doing these and talking to your people. And if there's any questions I missed, you know, Michael Noss, CMT on Twitter and, you know, Substacks and all those kind of places. So you can, you can come find me and ask me anything that I missed.